You've already had the lecture which talks about the true north pole and the true south pole and how the earth revolves around those two poles. And you've already discussed the magnetic north and south poles and the difference between the magnetic north and south pole and the geographic north and south pole. In this lecture we're going to see how does that pertain to navigation plotting. The three reference systems that we're going to talk about is the true reference system, the magnetic reference system, and then the ship's compass as a reference system. With the true north reference system, everything is referred to true north. So as you can see in the diagram, the particular ship has a heading, it's on a steady course, and you can see if we reference the heading of the ship's vessel to true north, then that would be the true course. Likewise, if we reference the ship's heading to magnetic north, that would be the magnetic course of the ship. And if we just read the compass, uh, we would observe the ship's compass course. So we need to be able to go between the three reference systems. That is, if we have a compass course, what is the true course? Likewise, if we have a true course, what is the compass course? And we need to be able to work through the three different reference systems. And there's a nomenclature there, true virgins make dull company at weddings, which is a memory aid or a mnemonic to help us remember the process. Just a quick review on variation. Again, variation is going to be based on where you are on the Earth's surface. We can find variation given to us on the compass rows on a chart. As you can see, the compass rows on the left-hand side, uh, the outer ring is the true north compass rows, the inner ring is the magnetic, and then if we go into the middle of the compass rows, we see the variation is given to us. And it's typically a change with variation, uh, so you have to calculate that per year for the current year that you're in. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see the diagram where it shows the Earth, and then the compass rows is inset on the Earth, and you can see how the true uh, north aligns with the, with the star on the compass rows, and you can see the deflection of the variation of the magnetic. So where do we find the deviation in practical application? Well, somebody comes out called the compass adjuster and swings the ship. Uh, they adjust the compass to alleviate as much deviation as they can, and then the residual deviation is, is uh, given to you on a compass card, or a graph as you can see there. And again, the deviation is going to be per heading of the vessel. So now we have to be able to work through the different reference systems. As you can see, uh, the true variation magnetic deviation compass, so the TVMDC uh, mnemonic there, and you can see the arrows pointing down. And when, and when we go in that direction, so we go from true to compass, we're going to add any westerly deviation or variation. And if it was east, we'd be subtracting it. Now if we go up from the bottom, so if we're going from compass up to true, we do exactly the opposite. We would add east and subtract west. There's also a memory aid if you're going that direction. That is from compass to true, and it's can dead men vote twice at elections. So let's look at our first practical example here. So if we were given a true bearing our course, we were given a variation and given deviation, how do we find compass? So again, we're trying to find the, the compass down at the bottom. So the first thing we need to do is determine our direction of flow. So we're going to go from the top to the bottom, which means we're going to add westerly. So the first piece of information we need is the variation. So we go to our chart, and in this case, our variation is 10 west. And it's going to be 10 west for all of those uh, headings or bearings, because the ship is in the same location. So we apply that and we find our magnetic so we can do, do the addition in this case because it's add westerly so 135 true becomes 145 magnetic 220 true becomes 230 magnetic 100 degrees true becomes 110 magnetic so now the next thing we need to do is apply the deviation so we would go into the deviation table with those different magnetic headings and determine the deviation so we do that and when we go into the table, we have 5 east for the 145 magnetic heading, we have 5 west for the 230 magnetic heading, 
and we have zero deviation for the 110 magnetic heading. So we go ahead and apply that to determine our compass. In this case, you can see it's just simple arithmetic. So 140 compass, 235 compass, and 110 compass. Now, if we were given compass variation and deviation and we had to find true, you can see that we're starting at the bottom of the table and we're working up. So we have compass, we need to determine true. We're working up the table. So that means we're going to add easterly. So if we have compass headings, 140, 235, and 110, the best thing we could do is go into the deviation table and we're just going to extrapolate. You know, it's not really the way the deviation table is designed, but it's the best thing that we can do. So we need to determine our deviation. We go into the table and we come with 5 east, 5 west, and 0. So we need to determine our magnetic heading. So we apply the deviation and we come up with 145, 230, and 110 magnetic. So the next thing we need to do is, to, is find the variation. We go to a, the compass rows. We determine what that is. And in this case, our variation is 10 west. We need to apply that. So again, we're going up. So westerly, we're going to go ahead and subtract and to determine true. And we come up with 135 true, 220 true, and 100 true. So again, in this case, we started at the bottom of the table and worked our way up. Now, you have to be very familiar with all three reference systems so that, such that if you were given true variation in compass and you had to work in the middle to determine magnetic and deviation, you have to be able to do that in some of these problems. So in this case, we're going to start with the true. We're given variation. So let's go ahead and determine magnetic. So our magnetic is 145 magnetic. 230 magnetic, 110 magnetic. Now we can see there's a difference between magnetic and compass in each of these cases. So you could go ahead and just do that arithmetic and you can see that on the 110 magnetic is the same as 110 compass, so that's zero. From the 235, you can see that's a difference of five degrees and to get from 230 to 235, we'd have to add it. So that would be a westerly. And if we go from 145 to 140, again, it's a difference of 5. But to go from 145 to 140, you can see we'd have to subtract 5. So that means it's going to be an easterly deviation. Now here's a table that just has all the different types of examples that you can go ahead and work through. The last thing that's worth mentioning is the magnetic compass error. And that's when you combine deviation and variation and take it as one whole. And when you take it as the whole, it's called compass error. Now, in the example here, you can see the variation and the deviation are both easterly. So the compass error is the sum of those two. However, keep in mind that variation and deviation does not have to be the same east or west. So you could have you know, a large variation one direction and a small variation in the other direction. But the, the, so you'd have to add those. And again, the point is that the compass error is the sum of the variation and deviation. So here's an example you can just see. If you were given true and given compass, the difference would be the compass error. So in the first example there, if the true uh, heading was two, 201 and the compass heading was 195, you can see the difference of six. And if we were going down, it's a subtraction of six, so that would be easterly. Uh, likewise, it was one, uh, 099 true, and you were comparing that to compass 107. That's a difference of 8, and it would be westerly because you'd have to add to get from 99 to 107. And again, here's the same table that you've already worked through, and if you were just taking the variation and deviation as a whole, kind of skipping from true to compass and taking variation and deviation as a whole, that would be the compass error. And if you have any questions, feel free to give me an email at info at natsea.com. So that's info at natsea.com.